What's going on guys, this is Rob. Uh, if you guys enjoy my content, make sure you hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that little bell so you never miss out on my sexy voice. I got this, oh I got this. Oh he's got this? Oh yeah yeah. Watch I Rob lose. This. I got this. Oh! 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 Are you serious? Oh! <laughs> I'm the man. Can you even believe it? Raw brain supreme. <laughs> Can you even believe this, ladies and gentlemen? The stack that we're at right now. Okay, keep on Nope. Not happening. Cage is observing. Nope. Trying to figure, trying to find a sweet spot. Trying to find the sweet spot. Good luck, man. <laughs> oh, oh, no oh, way. Oh, oh, no oh, way. oh, oh. No way. No way. What you know about it? Oh my what? god. <laughs> it's still going. It's Ooh. still going. Oh! oh. Do it again! <laughs> the flick technique is the most risky technique this, in the history of Jango. You're risking it all right now. Oh my, like, oh, oh my god. You guys, you guys want to go for the flick? You gotta go for the flick. It's simple. It's simple, right? Okay. Flick to the wrist. Oh! No. oh. oh. I don't even know. Look at this thing like turned. This thing is turning now. Oh my god. God. Ow. I don't know how this is holding on. Ow. Cage, Cage, you gotta aim towards the top half, I think. I think you gotta look towards the top half a little bit more. Hey, can I go for these now? I don't know, I think. Can, can, what, what, what's the rule on that? Oh, this looks so unstable. This thing is so unstable. Oh, it's, it's, it's wobbling. It's really teetering. It is. It's really teetering. No way. Yes. No. Mm. No. 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 no breathe. No. Okay. Alright, alright, we need some alcohol. Oh, I'm sweating, I'm sweating. We need some we need some alcohol on our side. Let's go. He's getting drunk, he's getting drunk. <laughs> Let's get it. Oh, he's getting the flick ready. He's getting the flick ready. He's winding it up. Oh, oh my goodness. goodness. <laughs> the flick technique. The power of the flick. You're done. I dude, Rob is on <laughs> some next level right now. <laughs> I would go for the middle one. I don't I don't even know. I can't even Oh, oh. my <laughs> Okay, uh I gotta go on a flight in like four hours to fly out to, uh, fly back out to Los Angeles. The beginning video you saw, it was myself and David, uh, David Cage, also known as Uncaged Games. Also, Jyware was there, uh, Comic Storian, Dan T. Editor, uh, Caboose. Like, we were, we all got together. We all went out to, uh, LA for a meeting of sorts, but we were playing Jenga. David's like, hey man, you want to play Jenga? And I'm like, he's like, dude, you can't, you can't handle, you can't handle me and Jenga. I'm like, oh yes, I can. Like, yes, I can. I've, I played, I played Jenga at PAX East one year with like, with, with like Markiplier and Jacksepticeye and all those guys. And they are beastly when it comes to Jenga. And I was like, dude, they'll beat the hell out of you at a Jenga game. So I was like, I'm pretty good at Jenga. So like, let's do this. And it was fun. It was pretty amazing. Actually, it was, it was pretty awesome. Anyway, uh, Red Hood. Yes. Okay. So, um, we're doing Red Hood annual number two, Red Hood and Arsenal reunited and it feels so good. I'm really excited right now. So, uh, this comes off the tails of Red Hood facing off against Batman. And again, that was a really, really cool little skirmish there because it kind of put into sharp relief the fact that like it is Batman and like Jason Todd is not Bruce Wayne. And so at the moment, he's kind of recovering from his injuries, really kind of, you know, regaining his bearings again. And this is an important thing because this is crushing for Jason. That's kind of the tough thing about it is when you look at the character of Jason Todd, I mean, right now he's literally trying to shoot it like a bowling ball and seeing if he can if he can hit the target when you're jason todd and you basically died and then you were resurrected through the lazarus pits and then you were trained to become a prodigious fighter and then you basically took gotham city by storm like you have this track record of being an exceedingly dangerous person and then when you can't even hold a gun steady and fire the trigger and hit your target it's crushing because it kind of feels like he's failed and that's when we find out he's actually here with roy harper now the roy harper uh jason todd chemistry is is one of the things that like like fans love them oh my god Red Hood and Arsenal, do they love that whole situation? Because that really comes out of the New 52. So, sidetrack for a second. Back when DC rebooted back in, uh, in, in 2011, what they gave us was Red Hood and the Outlaws. And what we got with this was essentially like Red Hood and Arsenal teaming up. And it was pretty cool. Within the first, like, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but in the first, like, 
four to six issues. It was Jason Todd who, who came across Starfire. Uh, Starfire nursed him back to health. The two of them kind of, it seemed like they were going to have a romance, but DC never really did anything with it. They eventually went to go rescue Roy Harper, uh, Arsenal, and then brought him back. And then it was actually Roy Harper and uh, and Corey, a uh, Starfire, who ended up touching touching naughty bits. And so when, when that whole thing happened, you basically got like the outlaws concept. And the chemistry between all three was incredible. Oh, it was amazing. And, and it was it was so fun to see the way it was written. And it was so cool to see how it all unfolded. But what DC did is they switched up the character of Roy Harper and they changed his addiction from heroin to alcohol. Now, a little bit of adult time here. When it came to the character of Roy Harper, back with uh, when you had Dennis O'Neill and Neil Adams who were writing the Green Arrow stories, uh, really Green Lantern, Green Arrow, the story Snowbirds Don't Fly is what moved the Green Arrow stories from being kind of like your traditional Silver Age comics to becoming like a lot darker. And so that actually set the story, set the stage for like Mike Grell with Longbow Hunters, the miniseries, and then eventually the ongoing series. Uh, it was pretty cool, you know, when you had like Green Arrow under Vertigo. But when it when it came to the character of Roy, the Snowbird story arc was the one where you found out he was addicted to heroin. And that was insane. Now in this day and age, because DC is, is under Warner Brothers moving towards a more family friendly direction or has been for a very long time, they obviously couldn't do that. Because even for a comic book, that's still pretty extreme. Back in the 70s, you could get away with that. Nowadays, you really couldn't do that anymore. And so they switched it up to alcoholism. And that's been a thing ever since Convergence. I mean, well, not really since Convergence. Convergence kind of retconned that in the sense that that was his new 52 addiction. And then when you had uh, Convergence, that basically brought in alcoholism. I'm pretty sure that's how it went. But the fact remains here that one other thing that, that really hits home is like how the two relate to one another. Because Roy Harper is really the closest thing that Jason Todd ever had to a friend. And it's a pretty significant moment because what he ends up doing is basically making his way into the, not only the mainframe, but like his his quarter of the, the vessel itself. And we're, in a, we're, we're basically met with Starfire. Now, Starfire showing up here is more of like a hologram projection. But for Jason Todd, it's something that he needs because he, what he needs to do is get back to his comfort zone. What he needs to do is get back to his safe space, the, the spot where everything will be okay. And by and large, when it came to Jason Todd, the New 52 reboot and the idea of him serve, you know working alongside uh, Arsenal and alongside Starfire was a way to kind of tone his character down a little bit to make him a little more comedic and a lot less dark. And say what you want, while some people loved it, some people hated it, it was an interesting shift to have. What we're seeing now is him returning back to the days of like Under the Red Hood, but there is still a little bit of, of comedy there. Now, something else that goes on here uh, goes on here with Roy Harper is Roy Harper's actually talking with Killer Croc. Now, this is a really, really cool transition that's been going on with Killer Croc for quite some time in the sense that it has been uh, DC's way of kind of reworking his character, but not outright. Killer Croc is basically the sponsor for, for Roy Harper and his alcoholism. And for those of you guys who don't know what a sponsor is, a sponsor is a person that you basically go to, you talk to, and they kind of help you cope with your, with, it's, it's like a psychologist without a psychology degree. They help you deal with your addiction, the things that you struggle with, while also helping to ground you and keep you tied into the real world. And so when you have Killer Croc talking to Roy Harper like this, it's a really interesting point of his character. Like Wayland's shift is, is really awesome. Like the way that Wayland Jones has moved over the years is really, really awesome because it makes him more dynamic. But to see this kind of softer side is, is, is really, really intriguing because what he does is he starts to ask Roy Harper like difficult questions, you know, and really starts to make these, these kind of difficult cases. You know, one of the things he says here, he asks Roy, he says, what makes you think you're in a position to help somebody else when your life is kind of turning to crap around you? And Croc doesn't ask that question for the purpose of tearing him down. He asks him for that, for, really for the purpose of kind of prodding, uh, prodding and saying, look, your life is a litmus test for how you can help other people. Your experiences you can bring to the table, pass those experiences on to others, and then help them improve their own lives by driving them to look at things that they wouldn't normally look at them before. And it's kind of crazy because Roy Harper has been dealing with this, this whole alcohol situation situation for a long, long time. And it really has changed the way that he sees things. And so what you end up having is, you know, switching over to Jason Todd, you end up having him hunting for Artemis and Bizarro. And this is probably the saddest part of this story. And the reason why is because where you had Arsenal and you had, um, and you, and you had Starfire, that was only ever going to be a limited thing. I mean, we knew that as the reader because we knew that eventually Starfire would go on to become part of the Titans. You would have, uh, Arsenal who would in some form or fashion rejoin Green Arrow. And then you would have, you know, Red Hood go back and do his own thing in Gotham City. We knew it was only a matter of time before the three split up. But when you had Artemis and you had Bizarro, you kind of saw this group of people who were just sort of thrust together through impossible standards. And then in turn, their characters began to shift and grow in like incredible ways. Artemis was by and large just kind of like a solo character. And then she has to learn and understand what it means to team up with someone like, like Jason Todd, whose moral ambiguity, I'm sorry, whose moral compass is very ambiguous. You've got Bizarro, who's technically the dumbest person in the DC universe, who gets injected with kryptonite. And because he's the opposite of Superman, it basically cures him or it fixes him temporarily. 
like, and he becomes the smartest person who ever lived, and he's working alongside them. Each one of these characters grew off the experiences of the other characters around them. And so with Jason Todd, it was a pretty close family. But not only that, when you when you look at Jason, and Jason looks at losing Artemis, and he looks at losing Bizarro, lost somewhere, you know, beyond the multiverse, then he in turn looks at like losing Star uh, losing uh, Starfire, and losing Roy Harper, losing Arsenal, and it's constantly one of these things where it feels like all Jason Todd does is lose things. All he does is experience loss. Everything he cares about gets taken away from him. But the cool thing about Jason Todd, and this is why Jason Todd fans love him so much, the cool thing about Jason's character is he keeps on going. Like in this instance, it'd be very free, very easy for him to just roll over and just say, you know what, it's not worth it. Like I'm tired of losing things. I'm tired of sacrificing things. I'm tired of having the things that I love taken away from me. I just don't want to do it anymore. Throw his hands in the air and quit. Instead, once he's once he's in, in form, once he's good enough to do it, he's right back to work, practicing, you know, working on his workout, working on his regimen, getting himself back in good health. These are the important things that go on. Now, the other half of this is kind of like the two of them teaming up for a quick moment, looking for like Susie Sue and looking for what seems to be like this criminal syndicate that at the very least you can give them access to where they can kind of gain information from. But Susie Sue, uh, Susie, yeah, Susie Sue, this is a weird situation because technically speaking, at the beginning of, of the New 52 with Red Hood and the Outlaws, she was essentially dead. Like she was a person who led like this, you know, small time criminal element. You know, I, I don't remember if it had ties to the Yakuza or not, but it was like a small time criminal element. She was defeated a couple times by Red Hood and at the second outing, he shot her in the head. And so it was believed that she was just dead. Like she was gone and out of the picture. Apparently not. Like she's essentially just kind of here and she's in a comatose state or is believed to have been in a comatose state and is actually shutting down. But it's kind of cool because they reference that, right? Like, like they talk about that. They talk about how she's still alive here and it doesn't necessarily make a whole lot of sense because they, they're kind of like, look, you know, catastrophic liver failure is what's killing her. But it's kind of funny. Jason Todd shot her in the head and this is the one thing that takes her down. So they reference past events, you know, and so we can just kind of assume that somewhere along the line when she was, you know, after she was shot, she was taken and, and brought to this facility and she's just kind of been there ever since. Now, of course, Susie Sue's henchmen basically show up and, you know, a fight ensues and there's nothing really major that goes on here. You know, nothing, nothing too significant here. Susie wakes up in the middle of all this, <laughs> you know, and, and it's just kind of like, hey, if anybody's going to crush my siblings, it's going to be me. So the two of you get out of here, you know, and, and like, I don't want to see you guys again. And it's like, yeah, let's, let's, let's go ahead and go. <laughs> let's get while the getting's good. But it's kind of a funny moment. This is sort of a, a small little throwback is really what this is. It's a love letter to people who loved Red Hood and Arsenal teaming up in the beginning of the new 52. And it's a great way to kind of do a send off. And the reason why is because Roy Harper's leaving. He's going to the Heroes in Crisis Center. You know, and that's one of the things that he kind of says here is there's a there's a, a center out there. There's a place out there that heroes can go to for those who need help, for those who struggle. But it's kind of cool because they sort of go back and and start to relive these old memories and, and you know, kind of talk about these old experiences the two of them had, you know, with regards to their to, to teaming up and, and the various adventures over the years and, and so on and so forth. But it is kind of a cool moment because for people who loved the chemistry between Roy Harper and Jason Todd, it's bittersweet. They get to see them reunited and they get kind of a taste of what it would be like if we saw Red Hood and Arsenal team up in, in you know, DC Rebirth. But it's better because they know it's not going to happen. That basically Roy Harper's leaving. He's going off to his, to this, you know, rehab and no one really knows what's going to happen. It's almost kind of saying a farewell, like a, like a final goodbye to, to Arsenal's character. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know how long it'll be before he comes back. And that's really what's being said here is he's going off to find some help, which is much needed for his character over the years, something that he's finally doing. But it's like, we don't really know what the impact is going to be on him. We don't really know exactly how all this is going to unfold. And it's a great little moment to kind of give us a, give a tip of the hat and say, hey, these guys had some great adventures together and maybe they'll have adventures together in the future. We don't really know. But for right now, the story of Jason Todd and the story of Arsenal as a team is over. And at some point along the line, it may return. We just don't really know when beautifully done and beautifully written. But with that being said, guys, we're going to bring this video to an end. If you are new here to Comments Explained, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoy this video, make sure you drop a like and I will catch you all later. Peace. Thank you.